Alright folks, welcome back to the Steel Series Chicago Dota 2 Open. Oh, we actually, uh, we may not have somebody loading this this game, which would be very tragic, but, uh, yeah. Okay. We may have to have a remake, but this is going to be winner's bracket round two games. Uh, I actually thought that we'd be running down to the loser's bracket round two, but our last game, a uh, bit of a double-edged sword. Well, no, it's, you know, it's got its good and bad. It has silver lining. Wasn't the greatest game, was kind of once more one-sided than I think either team was hoping to have it. But, the flip side is... The flip side is that uh, the game was so fast that we actually still have winner's bracket matches to have it. So, we're going to see more winner's bracket play. Round 2 will be... Sire versus Altered State. So we're, we are reprising a team, but this was the first lobby I saw that popped up, and I was like, hey, we'll have the minimum amount of downtime if we watch uh, the thing that comes comes up first. So, happy to do this. Happy to see Sire. It's a team that I am not familiar with at all. I think maybe one or two of these guys were at the June event, but nonetheless, uh, I'm happy to see them see what they can do here. All right, we'll just remake the game real quick. You guys are going to see my extremely serious... Uh, yeah, it's okay. See the lobby chat for just a second, but I don't think there was anything especially incriminating in the lobby chat, so it should be okay. So we're going to go up into this uh, second round winner's bracket match. This is going to be Altered State against Sire. Altered State, of course, the second place team from the June edition of this tournament. Sire weren't there, uh, but we have expanded, so the tournament is double the amount of teams this time. Sponsors are Ignite, Merlini, Steel Series, uh, and of course, uh, Dustoff. And I, I was asked by the chat to mention our other sponsor, which is, of course, <laughs> Naked Julia, the Twitch, because I, I can't remove links in Twitch chat, so we've already had more spam. No, it's not that I can't do it, but I don't remember what the commands are. So we're sponsored by all of the sites that spam in Twitch chat, or we are effectively sponsored by them because we can't uh, ensure that they don't spam us. So, Sire versus Altered State. Uh, I'm going to do this one solo. We haven't sorted out 100% what the Cokester situation is going to be yet, but probably by the end of today I'll have some idea, and we're definitely going to have a, a pretty fixed schedule for tomorrow in terms of Who's going to be casting with me? But for now, you're stuck with me, Vikramond. Uh, you can check me out. If you haven't uh, checked me out yet, you can, of course, follow me on this Twitch channel. Uh, Twitter, YouTube, uh, and I have a website as well. It's all under the same name, so feel free to check that out. Going up into this game, very, very typical bands, both for Altered State and Sire. So we've got the Io, Nature's Prophet, Batrider, and probably one other fairly common hero getting taken out. I wouldn't be surprised to see Lifestealer, OD... All that sort of junk getting taken out first, because those, those are the heroes that people really think. Oh, good call. Of course, I am not actually solo casting because we have a we have stats provided by Tweak, so he's given us some pretty high quality stuff in the last couple of games, and uh, I'm hoping to get some sick stats work this game. We actually already beat. Uh, we had a Kunkka game earlier today where I believe the Kunkka had higher GPM than a, than a professional Kunkka had in a recent pretty successful pro Kunkka game. So yeah, Tung Fu. So I was happy to hear that. And yeah, so Tweak has been with us for the last, uh, every game except the first one, so that's actually been a, a really great resource to improve the production value on the stream. At any rate, Sire taking a surprising amount of time to select their last ban. Usually when you go into something like this, you have a very clear idea of what you actually want to ban out first. But here, after some thought, they go with the Dark Seer, so they don't want to face up against that high teamfight potential. And Altered State immediately knee-jerk pick the OD, so... We were just talking about Outworld Devourer in the last game, and how some teams value him sort of in the middle, where they value him right around that, uh, they feel like they want to have the OD usually in, like, a second phase role, because if you pick him very early, there's tons of possible responses to him, teams have run. I've actually seen Lifestealer mid, which is an option here for Sire. It's not the strongest thing in the world, but he is able to still get some last hits. Uh, heroes like Razor is the very, very popular selection to just directly respond to that OD. And if you pick OD first and the other team picks Razor, you end up feeling like you sort of got a wash. So uh, if you pick him very early, you have the potential of getting counterpicked in some regard. Here, Sire go for the Weaver, so this is another hero that's become extremely fashionable. He was already very strong heading into the International 3, the of course the World Championships of Dota that were just held about two weeks ago. And at TI3, he was absolutely the story of the event. The very first day uh, of the preliminaries, he wasn't picked that much, but he had an amazing win rate, so he was 13-4 and four on the first day. Then the second day, 
and every single day from the second day of prelims on, Weaver was just nonstop drafted. He was always picked up. He wasn't banned that often uh, because it was tough to find space in the first ban phase for him, and he was just a tremendously powerful hero pretty much all the way through the competition, although we didn't see much of him in the grand finals. Reverted to Batrider OD every single game. But here's Sire. I mean, this is not a tremendously surprising draft, so... We knew probably that they were going to take the Razor, because that's the usual response of a team first picks OD, is that using one of your two response picks, if you're second pick, you take the Razor. So Razor and Weaver, of course these are two farmers, this is going to be the Razor. Uh, if at all possible, they're going to lane him against Outworld Devourer, so if, out, if OD is mid, Razor will go mid. If OD is solo safe, Razor will try to go solo hard. So, a fine matchup for Razor. He just responds with the static link uh, immediately if OD walks up to try to Astral Imprison him, and that gives him a good way of maintaining damage parity in the lane, coupled with the fact that it doesn't matter how low Razor's mana gets. Even if OD steals a lot of int from him, it's very, very unlikely that he steals him all the way down to not being able to cast Static Link, because if you look at the spell, it costs a whopping 30 mana at level 2 to cast the spell, so... You're not going to have such low intelligence that you're not able to cast your Static Link. You just, you're just you not going to be Plasma Fielding much either, but you don't have to necessarily level it that high that early. So that's Razor. Weaver, meanwhile, just going to be skittering around, dealing a lot of damage. I would expect that this game, uh, the way it's currently construed, I think it's more likely that they go with a BKB on Weaver instead of a Lincoln's. Uh, the Lincoln's may be somewhat tempting, simply because of the Naga Siren and Snare that can cause tremendous amounts of trouble for him. Maybe, I suppose it's possible that he still goes Lincoln's, but I would not be surprised to see both Razor and Weaver rushing up something like a BKB and just being able to not have to worry at all about that OD. The typical response to OD is to get those early BKBs and just lock him out of a dominant mid-game, because if you hit early enough targets on your Black King bar, he just can't really drop the hammer on you effectively. He's forced to wait and wait and wait to cast those great Sanity's Eclipses, and by the time he's ready to do it, you're sort of free. Now, there is a way to counteract that. So, uh, OD uh, can actually strive to get to the ultra late game. Once people's BKBs tick down to five seconds, he can go refresher. And then the instant the BKB comes off, just double Sanity's Eclipse to blow up almost anything. So, OD is not the... One of the common narratives about Outworld Devourer is that he just really, really struggles against BKB. But you can actually... Um, wait it out and try to sort of play late with OD. But it's very tough reaching that point. That mid-game can be very painful. And typically we see teams putting OD in a multi-core lineup, trying to secure up more than just the Outworld Devourer to deal damage because of the danger of a hero like Weaver or a hero like Razor just rushing up Black King Bar. Rubik, the pickup for Sire, and so uh, already trying to position themselves in some respect against what could happen with the... Uh, so for instance, the Naga can set up combos. Now with the Jakiro, that becomes even less unsurprising. Like, you know, once you hit a Song of the Siren, you can ensure that your Macro Pyre is going to be positioned well. You can even set up your Ice Path in a preliminary fashion. Now, they don't have the Dark Seer that combos so well with this, but that's maybe okay. Uh, let me just check if I'm open mic. I might not be. Okay, I am open mic. We're trying to think. I'm going to turn up the game volume a little bit. Remaining. Yeah, I think that sounds good. So... Something of a combo-based lineup on Altered State here. Still a little bit of versatility, and I would expect them to take another farmer. But Sire are definitely positioning against the Outworld Devourer any way they can. So Astral Imprisonment can be a great steal for Rubik. Uh, almost any of the Naga spells are you're happy stealing. Ice Path is an amazing steal for Rubik. And so the Nyx Assassin is just pure anti-OD tech. So even played as a, in a hard support role, and Nyx Assassin has been waning in some respect as a hard support simply because he is level dependent. Just the presence of that mana burn is very, very scary if you're an, an OD player. Because once that mana burn, if, later on in the game, once Nyx Assassin is level 14 or so, and he starts to get that rank 3, rank 4 mana burn, a 5 intelligence multiplayer on an OD who's maybe has 150, even 200 intelligence, can be half his health bar, easily. You end up having to go basically BKB on the OD, and it's, it's tricky to time when you go BKB to balance trying to deal damage as that world devourer with trying to stay alive and be survivable against what what the Nyx assassin can throw at you because of course Nyx I mean he's an excellent hero he uh, against a hero like Jakiro who has set piece damage like he drops down a field of macropire or an ice path or a dual breath 
Nyx can just walk into an Ice Path or a Macropire with Spike Carapace on if he wants to have a guaranteed stun on Jakiro. So I actually love this Nyx Assassin pickup. I think this is the perfect support here for Sire. The only thing will be guaranteeing the Nyx Assassin some levels. But against Jakiro, a hero who is typically running a defensive tri -line rather than an offensive, although, I don't know. Juggernaut, on the other hand, a hero that is very, very typically aggressive tri -line. So Ensnare does give you a lot of time once you're Naga's level 3. You can ensnare a target that essentially guarantees most of a Blade Fury on them, and it means that even the extremely slow Jakiro can walk up, land Ice Bath, do damage, and actually be a very effective uh, pairing. So this could be an aggressive try for Multoed Statum. An aggressive try is, I think, more or less what they want. They want to put pressure on Sire, they want to ensure that Nyx Assassin... The longer he stays at level like 2 or so, the better off you are. Nyx Assassin at stuck at 2 is a little better than Lion stuck at level 2, but not that much. He has a very, very, very short Spiked Carapace and a pretty short Impale. So uh, if you can constrict the Nyx, if you can prevent Rubik from hitting that Spell Steel level, you'll feel pretty good, I think. Sire, for their part, they ban out Clock, so maybe they feel that uh, it's still likely that... I mean, Clock would be quite effective here. He does, if you get a bad hookshot, can actually prevent Juggernaut from being able to really do much to a target, but... He would still be an effective offlaner for Altered State, either in the solo safe capacity or the uh, solo hard. I am a little bit surprised. I don't think Clock would have been that strong for what they're doing, but I, I think it's a perfectly fine ban. By no means is it a waste of a ban. And for their part, Altered State, I feel that they'll probably target... Uh, well, they got Razor, so, a so another solo lane hero, probably. But it's tricky. Altered State are actually in a position where it's not easy to ban any particular hero. Because the Weaver can run solo, or he can run as part of a try. They ban out Lone Druid. Uh, so they, they don't want the Lone Druid for themselves. They feel that that would have been too greedy. I actually feel that Lone Druid would be an excellent pick here. Simply because the Razor can only static link so many things. He can't static link the Juggernaut and the OD and the Lone Druid bear. So, and LD is very good against Weaver. But they ban out the LD. Obviously that would have been a very strong... Uh, greedy, but not so greedy that they couldn't do a lot of push with it for Sire. And actually, if your Weaver does well, if he goes BKB Desolator, your Razor tries to go towards BKB Agonims, and your LD doesn't even have to go BKB, you end up with a pushing lineup that's almost completely unstoppable by what, uh, what they have here for Altered State. So I do think that the Lone Druid ban is actually pretty smart, because it would have put a ton of pressure on Altered State to tremendously dominate the laning phase and just ensure that the Lone Druid uh, will be able to just push to victory in the mid game. Puck. So it'll be Puck. Uh, they do Radiant not by team. any means want the OD Puck matchup. So in some respect this is going to be not a guessing game, but definitely an intelligence game where both teams will want to know as much about each other's positioning as possible because Puck versus OD is a lane that is not Queen happy to play as Puck. Of. Queen of Pain, meanwhile, the Dark selection team. for Sire. If at all possible, Sire would love to have Queen of Pain against Razor, which is an okay match. Sorry, uh... Queen of Pain against Puck, which is a fine matchup in the lane, and OD against Razor. Uh, but Sire want Puck against Queen of Pain, if at all possible. They do not want Puck against OD. And they want Razor against, you know, Queen of Pain is fine. Razor against OD is also fine. So, let's introduce the teams. I'll start with Sire. Let me just uh, get the... I really need to fix this. I am an astonishing name. Getting some shoutouts. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> We'll talk about that in just a second, but first let's introduce Sire. We've got Bape on the Weaver. He's joined by Peep. Uh, I guess Peop, but I think it's like Peep as in people, so we'll say Peep. And Colt on the Rubik and Coltrane on the Nyx Assassin. This forms what looks like an aggressive try, so maybe they'll be trying to throw as much pressure onto this OD, on Kome's OD as possible. In the mid, we've got Wiz on the Razor. And in the top, we've got Daddy Fat Sex on the Puck. Let's see what they're up against. Altered State, we saw them win a game already today. We'll see how they do in this one. We've got Burger Kong, who played Keeper of the Light in the last game that we saw, on Jakiro here. Then we've got Avu Kabu on the Queen of Pain, who was... Uh, he's probably going to be mid-Queen of Pain, I think. And he's going to be against Razor. So mid-Queen of Pain will be piloted by Avu Kabu. He just uh, was talking a little bit about the fact that he actually... In the last tournament, we had the 1 vs. 1 Merlini solo mid-challenge. First to 1 kill. And it was Queen of Pain versus Queen of Pain, and Avukama was actually the only person to win. Uh, it was a bit of a throw, I gotta say. Uh, much as uh, mad respect, obviously, to Ben Wu, an excellent solo mid player, but he did he did get baited a little bit by a courier and uh, lost that game. But nonetheless, yeah, this is a world champion defeating Queen of Pain, so we'll see how he does in what looks to be a mid-roll here. 
Uh, Sien is on the Juggernaut in this tri lane, and he's joined by V Carbs on the Naga Assassin and Burger Kong on the Jakiro. That just leaves the solo lane to be piloted up by Kome. So uh, this guy was playing the Phantom Lancer in our last game, got pretty good farm. Might be a lot more difficult to find farm this time, actually. 1 verse 3 is not a tremendously favorable position for OD. Good news is, uh, 1 vs 3 is not a tremendously favorable position for Puck either. That said, solo safe, much easier to solo as Puck than it is on the solo hard. If he gets in a lot of trouble, Puck can probably just illusory orb back to behind the tower and be okay. One thing that'll be interesting is, is Puck pulled any wards? No wards for Puck, just a bunch of clarity. So, we probably will see Altered State using their supports to uh, fetch this creep camp over here and direct it to try to pull. So once the creep willy broom, as people like to say, gets pulled towards this area, Puck is stuck here to last hit, and your maximum illusory roar range is around here. That means you actually can't make it to the safety of the tower, and that's very, very troublesome. You're going to have trouble actually staying alive. So that, I think, is Altered State's strategy in this lane. In the mid, Queen of Pain and Razor I would expect to more or less trade. It is actually going to be pretty hard to gank the Razor. We'll see what they can do. And it, more or less an even an even matchup between Razor and Quap. I'm not sure about the laning situation, but the win rate definitely quite even. Razor, of course, as we discussed earlier, Razor typically picked up against heroes like OD, in which, which he is facing up against here. Uh, primarily for laning, not for after that. Uh, Razor is nothing special against OD after the laning phase, but he is amazing during the laning phase against him. And they won't find that matchup. But Daddy Fatsex, he's in a lot of trouble. He's going to orb away. He's actually Ice Path. Will he be able to orb? He does. He does manage to juke out the Shadow Strike as well. And this first blood attempt by Altered State is completely deflected. Nice play, honestly. Very fast fingers on that illusory orb from Daddy Fatsex. I actually thought that the Ice Path might stun him long enough that he wouldn't be able to catch the tail end of the orb, but he does. And, of course, Ice Path stuns for a paltry one second at rank one. So, nicely done by Sire. Avoids getting first blooded. If the puck gives up first blood, this becomes a much more difficult lane for him. Instead, it's still doable. And we've got a 3v1 up in the bottom, of course, with Kome facing up against these heroes. These lineups, I would have to say, even with the presence of Juggernaut, who's a somewhat non-standard hero are really not the most surprising lineups in the world. We have a lot of classic uh, heroes. We've got a lot of classic um, matchups. Juggernaut, not the most usual hero in the world, but the idea behind these lineups, the basically three farmers, Queen of Pain a little bit less farm dependent than Juggernaut and ODR, but basically three cores on one team, basically three cores on the other team. Puck, a hero who wants Arcane Boots Blink, possibly... Uh, What's wrong with me? Possibly Scythe or something like that. And, of course, the same in minus the Blink Dagger. I haven't seen Blink Daggers in a while. And Razor needs farm. Weaver needs lots of farm. This is basically TI3 compositions. Uh, and even having one surprising hero like Juggernaut is basically a TI3 composition anyway. Unfortunately, we are paused again. I don't know what the deal is. I think some players are lagging, but this is our second pause of the game, which does make me very sad. What is the deal? Shoutouts to the ge the general discussion community of Team Liquid. Yeah, it's a fine shoutout. I approve of it. There has been a lot of chat that I've actually missed. This is a tremendous amount of chattiness among these teams. Well, it's good. It's a friendly community. I mean, like I said, uh, if people are just watching, this is a Chicago-based LAN. This is the second one they've held in as many months. Basically, the first one was in mid-June. second one is here in August. So uh, I assume that if they do well again, I mean, the first event was very successful. If we succeed again, then... I have to assume Ignite is going to sponsor some more of these, and it's led to some fantastic games so far. Uh, we have a, a lot of competition, a lot of good teams in the tournament this time. I honestly don't know who's going to win. It could be Altered State or the teams here. Ice Path will whiff. Daddy Fatsack still playing pretty safe, still okay on this puck. Not much in the way of XP yet, only about 80, but the lane is pretty far off. They haven't been able to do anything with this creep camp just yet, so probably going to be an okay situation for puck. In the middle, it uh, looks like Sire Wiz's lane is pushing. He does have these two ranged creeps that's going to push right into the tower. Probably a couple of easy last hits. This is not the easiest last hit, actually, for Queen of Pain. He's going to miss both of these. Now he gets one, so. Avu Kambo last hitting okay, but so far Razor, actually, uh, seizing a bit of an advantage in this lane. He has gone for this no plasma field early build, so he has the run rank and unstable current. This will give Queen of Pain a little bit of a jolt every time she tries to shadow strike. And he has the static link as well, so if he does want to try to go in for the kill, 
Blasted Field won't do much, but uh, Static Link might do a lot. He loses line of sight there and breaks the tether, so he doesn't only get seven damage from that. Not tremendously substantial. But four for four is a great start for Razor in this lane. Kome, meanwhile, uh, he's one for one. Currently, the lane positioning is just fine for him. But he's so he's getting XP in spades. He's level three to a tri lane of one one one. And there's gonna have to be some careful lane management, honestly, from Sire. It may be difficult to actually pick off this OD because defensive Astral Imprisonment will count for a lot. Once he's level 5, it can actually get the rank 3 of that. It's such a long prison that if he prisons himself for a full 3 seconds, it's going to be very difficult for them to prevent two, one or two people TPing in and defending him and turning a fight. So Sire, I do think this is going to be a quite tricky situation for them. It's going to be pretty tough to get a kill. Nice thing is, it's going to be pretty friggin' tough to get a kill on Daddy Fat Sex's puck as well. So both of these solo laners, even if they're not able to get a tremendous amount of farm, will probably not be able to get kills. And here comes the rotation. Naga Siren, V-Carbs, actually coming down to the bottom. And I think he's here to stay. This was not a knee-jerk, uh, oh no, there's a fight, I have to help, and then I'll return back. This is definitely a Naga Siren that's here to support OD and make sure he gets the last hits he needs. Because right now, I would say that they're getting somewhat outlaned. Juggernaut is last hitting fine, but not tremendously well, so Sien is only 6 for 2. Puck actually has a fight amount of last hits, and here comes Wiz, actually, getting a static link in. Just using this Hastern to peel this dual lane off of Puck, reduce the pressure on Daddy Fatsax a bit, and that's working out great for them. Puck now has many less hits as Dark Se as uh, Juggernaut, and you have to say that Razor is doing very well in the mid. Queen of Pain found some free farm while he was away with the Hastern, but he's doing okay. 9 for 10 on Avocado, that's tremendous. 11 denies. So Razor probably going to have to stay a little more, because he's going to start falling behind on levels. He's already half a level, more than half a level behind. But he's doing okay. Weaver is doing okay. 9 for 1. But I actually love this rotation from Altered State. I think they properly deduced that they wouldn't be able to find a kill on Puck. And so there's no point in Naga Siren being there. You might as well not have the aggressive try, which is going to starve your XP a lot. Move the Naga Siren to bottom. End up with this 2-1-2 uh, two -two where you probably won't be able to earn kills. But your XP situation will be favorable relative to the other team, which is still running a 1-1-3. One, one, so I, I like this rotation. It's freed up OD to get much more farm than he was getting before. They won't be able to pull just yet. He does have the sentry. If he spots out the opposing observer, that would be great. Peep, meanwhile, putting a little bit of pressure on V-Carbs. I think they realize, I mean, they've got a tri-lane. They want to start getting kills. There's the telekinesis. Do they have mana to get the stun from Nyx Assassin? They do not, but Fade Bolt will do it. OD goes down, and that'll be first blood for Sire. A first blood that I frankly feel they really needed to make sure that these lanes don't start uh, shifting the wrong way. Sian, meanwhile, last inning a little better now. He's now 12 for 3 to the 9 for 1 for Puck, and I feel both teams advancing their game plan. In, a, in an early game like this, with these very, very aggressive, uh, greedy lineups from both teams, it's really hard to say that one team's going to get a huge advantage early unless there's some enormous outplay factors. And So far, I haven't really seen them going either way, except Wiz is taking a lot of damage under his tower. Shadow Strike is still running on him. Avukamo doesn't have his ultimate yet, so he can only prosecute this so much. He's gotten this uh, fairly common 2-1-2 build. We've actually seen people with only one rank in Shadow Strike today, but I, I do like this 2-1-2 build as well. It gives you that uh, very powerful damage over time effect to try to earn an advantage in the lane. And sooner or later, I think he's... Ooh, he does miss the Scream of Pain. I think he would have loved to land that. But meanwhile, a smoke coming out from Sire. They feel that they've guaranteed enough farm from Weaver that they he's going to feel okay. Babe is going to be safe in this lane. He's level 4. I don't think they can really kill him, probably. Oh my god. Phenol pause coming from Avukamu. But they, they're going to try to smoke, try to get an advantage. The Razor has fallen behind on levels. You can see this 14 denies. And so they want to try to transition if they can. There's the telekinesis. But will they actually land the Impale? Very nicely placed. But there's not nearly enough damage since he blinked away from the Razor. And this could actually get turned. Peep is in trouble. One more hit would do the trick. But Abu Kama doesn't feel nearly confident enough to chase it. And he walks out. Uh, I don't think we'll see as big of a snowballing effect from this Queen of Pain as we did on his Storm Spirit last time when he went, I believe, 19 and 3. But uh, nonetheless, this Queen of Pain is doing very well early on. Wiz, uh, not doing terribly himself. I think he probably has boots by now. Uh, no, he just has a full Basilius that he's delivering to himself for a little bit of sustainability. But I think Sire can't decide where they want to apply their supports right now. And that's going to cost them as far as levels go. Uh, Altered State knew exactly what they're doing with their supports, right? So... Burger Kong and V-Carbs are going to stack and pull the jungle as they can. They're going to try to secure an advantage and even find kills if they want to. There's the Entangle on Peep. There's the big damage Riptide Ice Path as well. Peep is responding any way he can, but the Jakiro comes through. Not enough damage to bring Rubik down. He'll walk away from another fight. And 
the tier one boots does help you be pretty speedy and get out of fights like that, but no kill either. And the more space you give OD, Kome, the more comfortable this hero is going to be. Weaver, not a great matchup against OD because eventually you just run out of mana. You can see that his maximum mana pool is 117 and he has five mana in his pool right now. So no opportunity to Shukachi, which is so core to making this hero good. So they've given Kome the space and even just a couple minutes of space lets OD dominate a lane. There goes another Astral Imprisonment. Bape is in a little bit of trouble here. There's the Entangle. There's the Ice Path clipping on the edge. But OD decides not to pursue. Even with his 89 base damage, they just felt that the odds of the reinforcement coming in with the Town Portal Scroll was a little bit too scary. And Wiz has gotten some room. Uh, no more denies for Avukamu after that initial burst of 14. So the Akala combined with the Magic Stick does put Wiz in a little bit of shape. But here's Avukamu doing some damage. The Eye of the Storm, the response from Wiz. So he was really scared of the Queen of Pain ultimate being thrown out. Little did he know it actually wasn't even there. Astral Imprisonment, meanwhile, Nyx Assassin with no mana. Only enough for the... Ooh, there's the Entangle. Another Riptide out on Peep. A couple more hits from OD. But no, again, they don't feel safe. Koma trying to play as safely as he possibly can. Bape is in the fray. There's the Jakiro Fire Breath. Peep will go down. That's a one-to-one. -one. But they're out of mana now, or at least V-Carbs is. They won't be able to get another Entangle. Burger Kong and Koma are doing all right. But it's not enough for the kill. Koma building towards his Tranquil Boots. He'll have that delivered now. And that's another active that he can use to just continue chaining up those Astral Prisons. If you're not familiar with the mechanic, any active item has a chance of proccing this Essence Aura to return OD mana. And Tranquil Boots are an item that costs next to no mana, is useful for lane sustain, and can give you that extra jolt of mana if it manages to proc the Essence Aura. Sien, meanwhile, takes an orb, but he smells trouble, and this is incredibly smart. There's a DD rune for Razor. If Sien had stayed up here as Juggernaut, that would probably be a dead Juggernaut. I mean, he would have been Dream Coiled. He could try to jump out of it with his, um, with his Spin, but Spin will not stop this, the Static Field, sorry, the Static Link. And once that Link starts ticking on you, once that double damage, you will die as Juggernaut. But very smart play, very safe. And now the lanes, uh, which were initially tilting a little bit in Cyrus' favor, I think are unquestionably in Altered State's favor now. You've got a level 2 level advantage for the Queen of Pain, lasting extremely well. The OD has gotten enough space that he's been able to farm quite well, has his Tranquils and a little bit of a nest egg as well. And Sien on this uh, Juggernaut is farming well also. Now the Weaver still has decent last hits, but that's really slowed down as he's lacked the mana to achieve. There's an Ice Path, but... Not enough follow-up, the uh, dual breath will also whiff, but again, this is just pressure. It keeps people off the lanes, it keeps Weaver from last hitting. You can see that if Weaver does not have Shukachi mana, he will not approach the lane, simply because he has no chance to actually survive it. The more important thing that is, as at level 1, when he reaches that level 6 for that time lapse, time lapse level 1 costs 150 mana, so he has no chance whatsoever of being able to time lapse out of trouble, and so Weaver neutered effectively in this lane. You can actually see him rotating. He may try to go up against the Juggernaut, a lane that he cannot possibly lose, and try to reduce the pressure being thrown out by the OD. Of course, that means Daddy Fatsax. Oh, that was a really nice waning rift. The Omni Slash could have secured the kill there, but the, the waning rift extremely well timed for Daddy Fatsax. He is a level, about half a level ahead of Juggernaut because of those are literally trilating that Altered State were trying to do. And so the good news for Sire, Puck, I think, is farming as well as you could possibly expect. Razor is farming okay, and Weaver, if he finally finds a safe lane, which looks to be the top, this is actually a smart little transfer of allocation. I think we're most likely to see the Puck moving to mid, because he can actually fight Avukamo and he's fine with levels, but here comes the Scream of Pain. He doesn't have Mon, actually doesn't have his ultimate, he was gone the 2-2-2-4, two, 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 so probably going to level the ultimate at levels 10 and 11. It's tough to have the Mana to actually chain the ultimate early, so this is a build that is not tremendously uncommon, it's not that exotic. So what they could do, send Razor to the tri-lane, where he's still going to be effective against OD, have Weaver over here, yeah, Weaver is definitely staying here, and you could send Puck mid, or just send Puck to sort of Roman gank, but a lot of trouble for Peep here, he may be the second death for Sire, yes he is, nice chaining up of it again, once that ensnare comes up, you're guaranteed to be slammed into by Riptide, the OD is going to take advantage of the Riptide armor decrease, and of course the Ice Path and, ice path and Dual Breath from Shakiro. Queen of Pain is here. If this becomes a bigger fight, Avukamo could try to mop it up. Wiz has rotated, so I'm not surprised to see this. This is basically what Sire were going to always attempt to do. But Koma diving pretty deep. They want the tier 1. It's still pretty healthy. They're going to use a fortification. I think this means that they are going to try to defend this. So Peep, he's coming up. He walks right in. No. He doesn't want to die again. He doesn't want to get caught out the way he has been twice already. But it's obvious that Sire want to fight. It's obvious that they want to clash if at all possible. And Peep is going to walk up, 
Uh, Avukamu backing off. It does look like a back off in general. This dual nil null talisman. Definitely a Queen of Pain build that's going to seek to try to fight it out early, but so far, not too much getting done. And Bape, finally given the space that he wants, the space that he needs, as long as he doesn't get brutally caught out by some sort of rotating gig, he's going to be okay. But this is a bit out of position. Peep gets caught out again. This Rubik is way, way, way too hyped. He throws out Telekinesis and Fade Bolt, but I don't know if this is enough for them to do anything about it. Uh, Daddy's Fat Sacks is here on Puck as well, so they just commit more and more and more. But all they're getting out of it is a repeatedly dead Rubik. The Ice Path Edge almost clips Coltrane there, but still somewhat safe. But I wonder what Sire are getting out of this. They're not last hitting actively. They're not really developing anybody. Puck is falling behind on levels. I Wiz does manage to steal an Invis rune there. That's something, but they're just static. They're completely static, and OD is continuing to last hit, as well as, frankly, uh, the... Juggernaut and Queen of Pain. Right now, they're just, uh, Ultimate State are setting themselves up to outcarry. Whenever both teams are playing greedy, the team that can pressure the other team to letting up the greed even for a second is the team that's going to get an advantage. And here, that's unquestionably Ultimate State. Nice defensive ice path. Jakiro will walk away into safety. I think Ultimate State wants something because they do have this Razor and this room. This was seen, but Komei in a bit of trouble. The Static Link already ticking a lot. There's the Telekinesis. A big AoE and Sien battle furying through. The Razor is down. The Dream Coil will clip. There comes the hammer. The sand is eclipsed. Good for another kill. OD will walk away. Avukamu chasing as well. One more last hit. No. He actually gets brought down with a double kill for the Jakiro and another. It's three for one for in favor of Altered State. And they only lose the Queen of Pain. They were just able to disengage with the with the OD. They were able to disengage with the Juggernaut. And so only the Queen of Pain traded for quite a bit. Not even with a fight that Sire wanted to take. It's really, you see that early lack of farm and levels for the Razor, like, not paying off, but basically the opposite Radiant's of paying off for Sire there. Wiz was just not able to live for long enough to actually take advantage of his static link. It was ticking, it was ticking, it was ticking, he was getting more and more damage, but he was getting brought down faster than he could utilize the damage, and I think if you see Razor with, like, treads by that point, he feels a lot better about staying in that fight and actually continuing to prosecute it. So, Sire gets smacked down a little bit, Unfortunately, I think this spells the end of this as a, a really a going concern in terms of the tri-lane. Weaver has actually returned into the lanes because, of course, uh, it's now Juggernaut here. OD's not here, and when OD's not here, Weaver feels a lot more comfortable. Looks like he'll be going for the Lincolns after all. Or I, I mean, I guess I was wrong. I thought that he'd probably go BKB, but I think the Lincolns makes quite a bit of sense as well against that extremely overpowered and snare spell. Uh, Avukamu, meanwhile, blinking out of trouble. That rank 2 blink helping him with a little bit of extra range there. Meanwhile, Bape and Coltrane trying to hold off V-Carbs and company here. V-Carbs really wants the ensnare. If he manages to... No. Bape very appropriately shook a on the east side and as far up as possible to ensure that he doesn't get caught on the ensnare as he tries to walk, walk it away. Burger Kong. Uh, on this Jakiro, he's actually done surprisingly well for himself. He's 3-0-3. So this Jakiro has been part of 100% of their kills, and that means that he probably can pick up the Arcane Boots immediately if he wants it. I've also seen phase Jakiro sometimes, so maybe we could see that, I don't know. Meanwhile, Wiz is back down here. Maybe they want another fight. Peep and Coltrane are deep, deep in. There's the Ice Path on two. Dual Breath from Jakiro. The Nyx Assassin and Rubik are going to get mopped up. Nice Spike Carapace. Sien jumping through. It looks like Bape is going to try to get a kill here, but he's walking right through a Sentry Ward. Excellent Ice Path! There's the Entangle! Jakiro and so Weaver in so much trouble. The Ensnare comes through, and Abu Kamu mops it up with the Scream of Pain. What an excellently put together fight by Altered State, combined with a miscommunication by Sire. They really shouldn't have moved. The this has been a consistent problem for them. This the supports are getting really hype, and Coltrane and Peep are heading ahead of the team. And so by the time the cores come in, the supports are either dead or their disables are already done. Ideally, when the cores are coming in and dealing damage, you already want people to be stunned up or disabled. Because then, the, the core start dealing a ton of damage, and you redirect the flow of the damage of the other team onto potentially those core heroes. Instead, the supports, Peep, and uh, Coltrane are getting brought down so quickly, I mean, we're talking about a 2 and 5 Rubik. 2 and 5. He has found level 6, but I mean, it's 16 minutes in. It would be a shame if he weren't level 6. Here's Koman now, just punishing this Rubik very heavily. He can steal Astron President, maybe? Actually, he has it, but he doesn't have the mana to cast it. He's going to lift him up. Komen possibly in a little bit of trouble. They're going to keep chasing. The Buckler used for Komen, though, and he walks away. No problem. They can't possibly chase him under the tower. Queen of Pain level 10 is just going to be dominant in this game. 
So, Sire, uh, they really have to make sure that the supports are able to work with the rest of the team rather than just coming before them. Because Daddy Fatsax, I mean, he's not doing poorly. He has his treads. He's only about 900 away from a Blink Dagger. And, I mean, Peep, even with all his deaths, at least he's found levels. Nyx Assassin has found a few levels as well. He's going to have Vendetta relatively soon. They can start doing some work. All they need to do is make sure that the they don't get into worse team fights. There's the Arcane Bits for Jakiro. But that's going to be difficult, because we're almost at the point at which Altered State can just start forcing fights. We've got Yasha complete for uh, Juggernaut. This is a fairly typical build for him here. I would expect him to make drums. Yeah, they don't have any other drums carriers. So we're going to see drums from the Jug. Drums Yasha gives Jug a tremendous amount of speed and some initiation capability. Combined with the fact that they have a mechanism and Sire is nowhere near theirs, I would expect Razor to probably be the mechanism carrier. This is going to mean that Altered State can go from responding to fights to generating fights. And once they can generate fights... Sire are gonna have a tough time. <laughs> Alter State already putting a little bit of pressure on the bottom tower here. I'm just. I don't know if Dire are really in a position to contest this. They do have some farm, so Wiz is farming okay on this Razor. Daddy Fatsax has got a great game on Puck. Oh, this is trouble for Bape. There's the spin. There's the Ice Path. Macropire as well. He does use Time Lapse. That's very, very effective. The Blink, sorry, the Impale only hits one. V Carbs actually forced to use Song of the Siren to disengage this, because this fight didn't go quite well. Or will they re-engage? He doesn't have the mana for Omni Slash, but he does have some ability to generate a pressure. Nice Sentry Ward placement. Bape walks right into this. Dream Call from Daddy Fatsax. Will he land the Waning Rift? There it is. No Blink is hurting him here, though. Spin away. It does look like Juggernaut will be able to make it out. Queen of Pain makes it out. And all they end up doing is killing the Weaver. I don't know about that re-engagement from Weaver. I don't know if that was really that good of an idea. He's their most farmed hero, and that's his second death of the game. Unfortunately, he's only been part of one, so he has barely any reliable gold to his name. Moving farther and farther away from that Lincoln Sphere, which you really have to hit relatively early. I think they... Uh, Sire felt like they could turn that fight around, but in the end, Song of the Siren just allowed for really good positioning from Altered State, and the ability with this well-placed Sentry Ward to just respond immediately to the Weaver's attempt to come back in and maybe try to steal a kill or two. And OD, even with a difficult start, just look at the laning and last hitting prowess of this hero. He's got 21 denies and 66 last hits. If you didn't know better, you'd be like, oh, this was another perfectly smooth OD game. Well, no, actually, he started out in a 1 versus 3 lane where he was barely able to last hit at all. But Altered State were able to make more stuff happen in more of the map to generate more and more space for OD to be safe and farm up. And so that's given him this mechanism. We could see him go towards Force Staff or even a Fast Scythe of Ice now that he's landing well. And oh my god! What is this? Boots of Travel first, Queen of Pain. Have we learned nothing from Fnatic? Stolen Song of the Siren from Peep here actually lets him reposition. That's the tool maybe that they wanted to give themselves better positioning here. And that's safety for him. Rubik does not get caught out again. Uh, somewhat of a fool me five times. Shame on me, fool me six times. I messed up that saying, but that's okay. <laughs> nice Song of the Siren steal, nice usage of it. Unfortunately, it's an extremely long cooldown because it's the rank 1 Song of the Siren, so he'll have to steal something else to continue to be useful. But. Altered State, they've got this only rank 1 healing ward, but it's already pretty strong, and here we go. There's the Astro Imprisonment. Vendetta comes out from the Nyx Assassin. Ice Path used pretty early, doesn't hit on too much. They do see this Nyx Assassin. He tries his best, but he's forced to come back out. His Vendetta completely coming to nothing. There's the Dream Quote, but can they actually prosecute this? There's the Entangle. Daddy Fatsax in so much trouble. These Ice Paths are absolutely fantastic from Jakiro here, and Peep gets brought down. Three for zero so far. They forgot they couldn't do much of anything, and Avukamu, meanwhile, completely feeding to Wiz's Razor. Uh, calls it a misclick, but you know, whatever. Blah, buy back and then Boots of Traveling in from the Queen of Pain. This is the nice thing about Boots of Travel. He's able to lose a fight as embarrassingly as he just did and still rejoin the push onto the tier 2. This Queen of Pain going to help out his team. Sien, Kome, they're farmed enough. They can take this tier 2. Almost nothing that Sour can do in response to this. They used that Dream Qual in the last fight. Only a level 10 puck. Facing up against three players, all with their level 2 ultimates. Sanity's Eclipse just starting off that fight. Think about this. They've got Mechanism, so that gives them 250 extra HP across the entire team. And they've got Sandy's Eclipse, which probably takes about 250 HP off of your entire team. So that's a 500 point swing. But is it enough? 
Avokama gets brought down again, right after the buyback. That was actually excellent telekinesis by Peep combined with a nicely placed plasma field. And they bring down the Queen of Pain very early. That is a tremendous amount of gold lost. Bait, meanwhile, he's in the middle of the action. Oh my god. He wants to keep going into this fight, but can they actually chase successfully? They need to stun Burger Kong somehow. They can't. They can't get Peep there in time to telekinesis and altered state escape. With just the Queen of Pain lost now, to be fair... That is about uh, 3,000 gold that was almost completely useless on Queen of Pain. So take this net worth value for Queen of Pain and basically subtract 3,000 from it because that's how much he just paid for. Boots of Travel combined with dying twice and buying back and the fact that he's not doing anything for 30 seconds due to that second death. So uh, a bit of an unnecessarily we're ahead, let's get more ahead pick up there. I really feel that maybe he could have gone a less fanaticish build there, but... I mean, we're talking about the guy who beat Merlini uh, 1v1 co-op, so uh, there's only so many call-outs I can give to players that are still vastly better than myself. But that last fight does give Sire a little bit of breathing room, so they know that this Queen of Pain is not something that they need to worry about that much. He's got great mobility, but not that much ability to kill people after he gets to the place that he's moving to. Sien, on the other hand, this Omni Slash is going to be an insta-kill on Rubik. And he's Mithril Hammers. This could be... Uh, Desolator. I actually think that's kind of nifty, because it... Oh, D has trouble pushing. In fact, he's a hero who can't push for, for shit, basically. So, once they add on the ability to have that Desolator, Juggernaut is going to be the anchor of a very strong push with Healing Ward, and then OD and Queen of Pain just bashing on the tower. Bape, he's doing pretty well for himself. He does make that Perseverance, still trying to make the Lincoln Sphere, but he's in a lot of trouble, and he knows it. He's going to hide out in the woods here, as Altered State push into the Tier 1 tower, and they have Blink on Puck now, so Sire could try to generate an opportunity. They're falling pretty far behind, so I feel that they probably feel the pressure to get a big 5-man fight off. The question is, is there one in the cards? Can they possibly get a good 5-man engagement? Avu Kamu, he's gonna TP away. Now, if they've seen this, which I don't think they have, but if they see that there's no Quap here, maybe, maybe this is something they could do. Healing Ward is stolen, that is a potentially effective. There's the Waiting Rift, he silences OD for a bit, breaks the, the Cold Snap, there is actually the Macropire and Ice Path, once again, huge. The Sanity's Eclipse comes down, and Sienna's just spinning through. Nyx Assassin, but they've lost two already, and Burger Kong is taking tremendous damage from Wiz. He got the big Static Link, and that's enough! For them to mop up everybody, including Sien, and the lack of presence of Queen of Pain was fateful there. But Avukamo could come around the back, but they know him. They've pinged him. No, that's actually OD pinging him. Wiz is going to get out of here. And that was a great fight for Sire in the end. They forced the Sandus Eclipse on only three. The Razor was able to live. He's getting close to his BKB. And that was a fantastic fight that couldn't have really gone any better for them. They lose the Nyx Assassin. But they pick up basically everybody. And just the stuns on OD. The well-placed Waiting Rift into Dream Quell, into Pale. What? a blink he blinks out of the sonic wave completely and this might be i don't know i feel like they're paying for a bit of overconfidence altered state it's not to the point where they're giving the game away but sire are back into this in a big way that moved weaver much closer to his lincoln sphere that moved razor much closer to his bkb no he's not going to go bkb he's going to go turn around he's going to make the agadim scepter and that gives them a lot of pushing power as well sire they're not going to go defensive. They're not going to say, okay, we want to live through this. They're going to say, no, we don't care about living through this. We want to do more to you than you're doing to us. And that is ballsy because Burger Kong has been a tremendously on point Jakiro this game. He has honestly had just fantastic play, 4 1 and 10. By far the most solid performer on Altered State so far this game. This Jakiro is well on his way to a Hood of Defiance that will eventually be made into a pipe to counteract the power of Nyx Assassin, Rubik, and Puck. But. I mean, Sire, you gotta hand it to them. If this, They know that the Weaver isn't going to be dealing as much damage as they want because he's going Lincolns, so they're going to try to counteract that. They're going to try to deliver more damage to the Eraser by applying Aghanim Scepter. And if his positioning is good, which in that fight, Wiz's positioning was impeccable, if his positioning continues to be great and he dodges out the Jakiro combos, I actually think that Sire could continue to take more than just that fight. I mean, that was a fight in which they were 10k gold behind, and they managed to take it handily due to good positioning and good initiation. That blink puck is very substantial, and that's when you start to pay for not having those BKBs. You don't have BKB on OD, although he's getting very close. Actually, is he ferrying it? No, he's not. He doesn't have it yet. You don't have BKB on OD, and you don't have BKB on Queen of Pain, because he's gone all in. He's actually doubled down. He now has Boots of Travel Point Booster. This is basically a ganking quad where if she jumps on you, if she boots or travels in, she can one-shot you damn near once she gets that Aghanim Scepter. 
But I don't know. I feel like both teams going very, very hard. This is a winner's bracket game. Neither team is in danger of illumination. And so they are just going to toss haymakers at each other. Like two seasoned boxers that are just going to try to see who can punch out the other one. That's an important illusory orb. It misses. It doesn't hit anybody. That's a little bit of space. Bape runs right in. But he does manage to juke out both the entangle and the ice path. Can they turn it around? He throws out the bugs. But they don't have that orb. It's just coming off cooldown right now. And so very, very tense moment. There's the Astro Imprisonment. I believe it's... It's on the Nyx. He gets caught with the Ice Path. Can they take advantage? No. They actually stun out with the Spike Carapace. It's only rank 1 because he's had to get Mana Burn. Kome, he's Telekinesis. Is this the opportunity? He gets hit with the Stone Screw of Pain. But wow, there's the Omni Slash from Sien. He follows this up with a spin. Wiz has taken a lot of damage. He's using a Static Link. Oh, Weaver is already down. Will they try to do a buyback? They can't. They don't have the money. They are very, very low. So is Wiz. Comet chasing one more orb. He's so low. V-Carb's not able to chase, and they're actually heading to their high ground. But Avukamu, with the DT rune, he gets stunned. They haven't been able to take advantage of this, and Weaver did find the money finally to buy back. And so, honestly, this continues to be just an incredibly tense positioning. Sire, we talked about how they need good positioning to win these fights. That wasn't the positioning they wanted. They don't take the fight, but they only lose Weaver in a buyback for it. It could, and honestly, a tower. It could have been worse, folks. They're still hanging on. One of the things I'm loving about these games that we've seen today is even in some of the ones that uh, one team gets way ahead early, the other team's hanging on and actually able to sustain themselves through good 5 vs 5 team fight. And I feel like Sire, they are not even at this much of a deficit. They're not out of this game. They can definitely try to make something happen. The levels are not completely terrible. The main issue is this uh, two-level disadvantage for Puck relative to Queen of Pain. But there's still hope, honestly. There's still hope for Sire. And if they get a good 5 versus 5, if they get good positioning, they need to reestablish Vision. Their last Observer Ward is running out. There's Vision up here for uh, Altered State. There's Vision down here. So they know the Roche Pit positioning. They know the positioning around the jungle. It's going to be imperative for Sire, if they can, to try to find some wards, some vision to sort of counter-initiate, and maybe even sneak a Roshan some lack of uh, counter, even with lack of armor reduction on their team. Issue is no mech. That Sandy's Eclipse plus mechanism combo is still just way more health that Sire have to chew through than Altered State have to chew through. And so that's a disadvantage that they'll have to cope with. There is the combo again. Ice Path on two, but they decide not to follow up. V-Carb's actually in a bit of trouble here. The Vendetta is here, but again, these Sentry Wards have done so much work for Altered State all game, and Coltrane forced to disengage. He may try to re-enter, but again, keep in mind, it's only a level one Vendetta. So it's going to run out of time, and once he comes back into Vision, they know that they don't need to worry about it at all. And so the Siege continues. Here comes another Orb from Puck. He doesn't feel comfortable. They just don't find the positioning, and the Sentry Wards are so good that the Nyx Assassin and Weaver don't feel comfortable either. This is great patient play <coughs> from Altered State here. V-Carbs throws out an Entangle. Uh, no real opportunity for either team, and Razor has finished his Agadim Scepter. So keep an eye on Wiz. If his positioning is good, if he ducks out of the Sandy's Eclipse that's coming up in only 8 seconds, it could be something. It could be an opportunity. Radiant's Queen of Pain's Agadim's not done yet. The fight could be coming out. Bape is in a lot of trouble. There's the Astro President followed up by the Ice Path. The Omni Slash comes through. Daddy Fat Sex. He gets brought down. The loss of the puck is very, very fateful. The spin to win coming out. And Wiz, he's almost dead as well. Song of the Siren allowing Altered State to just pick the rest of the engagement. Actually, he messed that up. That's a little tricky thing. We'll talk about it in a second. And Wiz... He does make it out. They actually, and I don't know how this happened, but they lose Juggernaut to some excellent play by, I have to guess, Rubik. Where is Rubik at? Yeah, the stolen Omni Slash killed Juggernaut while he was in his Blade Fury. So, three dead. He, yeah, I mean, Sien has been doing very well on Jug. He's actually the highest net worth person on the map. That's a great point. He did go that Desolator build we were talking about. He's very fast. Phase, Yasha, Dezo. Dezo gives him fantastic damage, it gives him push capacity, he has great GPM. The issue here is they just can't seem to get the team fights because their their damage, uh, Sire are doing a good job of spreading out. So I actually thought that when the puck went down early, that fight was not going to go well for Sire. But they split the fight up. The Juggernaut got kind of uh, outplayed by Rubik, frankly, with that greatly timed Omni Slash. He stole the Omni Slash before Cien cast his Blade Fury, and so he was able to Omni Slash on top of Cien's Blade Fury, take no damage while doing so, and kill the Juggernaut. That took out the highest net worth person on their team. The OD was kind of one and done with the Sanity's Eclipse, and so Sire were actually able to take what, in my opinion, was a fairly favorable trade. So every fight, 
is looking a little worse for Altered State than the fight before, and if you're Altered State, you don't feel good about that at all. That said, Jakiro is still a monster of a game, working towards his pipe, has this Hood of Defiance. Queen of Pain actually has Agadim Scepter if he wants to buy out for it, and possibly the most important thing in this entire uh, terms of item building. OD has Black King Bar. We can't overstate how important these BKB usages are going to be. Nyx Assassin, Puck, Rubik, all heroes that can give you a tremendous amount of issues. And as OD, you don't want to get brought down by these guys. The BKB will give you the opportunity to live through that. Uh, once he has BKB, basically you need Rubik to steal a big disable for them to have any hope of disabling him for long enough. Keep in mind, Waning Rift doesn't matter at that point. Uh, Kome can just jump out of the Waning Rift by using the BKB. Here's Abukamu jumping in! He wants to use that Agatha Scepter, but he gets completely shut down! The Rubik Omni Slash is the response! Omni Slash getting thrown out, but Juggernaut as well. Peep is trapped in an ensnare here, and Daddy Fat Sex doesn't get out of this alive. They respond to the Queen of Pain effectively, but I think they lose three. Peep with a nice spin, but he just doesn't have the health to live through this. There's- there is Wiz coming around the back! He gets a double already! Burger Cog now in trouble! Bape chasing him out! I don't think Jakiro lives through this! Razor is still smashed! down. It's a 3 for 3! Will Wiz be able to pick off Kome? That's the question for me. Kome's in a lot of trouble. I don't think BKB even matters at this point. Bape is going to hit him. He uses the BKB. He has to imprison the Weaver, but he's taking so much damage from Wiz. How much can they afford to chase, though? I don't know if they can keep chasing here. Bape forced to peel off. It's a 3 for 3 in the end. They do get Naga to buy back, so I have to say, Sire, it's these cores. They're getting big enough. You can see that the Razor is now higher net worth than the OD or the Queen of Pain. And the Weaver is no slouch as well. He has his Lincoln Sphere now, and he'll be able to start building damage items. I do still think that if Sire can find a mechanism, that they can completely turn these fights. It's only the lack of a mechanism that's preventing them from keeping these supports alive. The supports and the Puck are dying every time, and that's a serious problem. The Puck's net worth compared to the Queen of Pains, even though Queen of Pains is partially bound up in the Spoots of Travel, this is a problem. Puck needs to catch up. He can't be two levels or three levels behind the Queen of Pain. That said, Razor and Weaver right now are the story of this game. Wiz is doing an incredibly Radiant's smart thing. He's attack. coming into fights very late, which is good because it's already after a lot of the stuns and a lot of the damage gets thrown out. Once the BKB is done on Razor, then he can initiate much earlier. He could come in with the supports rather than waiting until after the supports. And that's a point at which I think Sarah are going to feel much more comfortable. Now the thing is, I suspect that if we look at the, uh, the, the graphs, so if we look at the gold balance, just the fact that Juggernaut is continuing to farm, Sien is getting scarier and scarier, is going to make it seem like uh, Sire aren't really getting back into it. Like you can see, this is basically plateaued, but isn't getting any better. But if we look at XP, the XP is drifting back. They're able, any fight in which they trade is a good fight for Sire because they're getting more from it than the team that's nominally ahead. And so even with Manta style, uh, the problem is that Manta style, I mean, you, oh, actually, we're not going to have a fight. V-Carb's caught completely out. Keep on to use this buyback. Now, this is an amazing Ice Path Macro Pyre combo. Sien is going to follow up with this as much as he can. Spin versus spin. Will Sien get brought down? An excellent impale from Nyx Assassin. But that Aghanim Scepter coming out from Queen of Pain will take two immediately. Juggernaut down. Weaver and Razor gone. And those were the critical heroes. Puck is going to try to escape, but I don't know if he can. Abu Kamu, he took over that fight. He jumped in at the perfect time, and he said, You want to criticize my Aghanim Scepter? You want to criticize my Boots of Travel? There's why I picked them up. I can pop these heroes at any time I want, and that is when you look at your item loadout as Sire, and you say, God dang, I wish these were BKBs, because Queen of Pain just one-shot that team fight into submission. And they will be able to take advantage of that. Even with Sien on the ground, he is their primary pusher. But that's an easy tier 2 tower for Altered State. And just at the moment at which it seemed like Sire were feeling confident enough to take team fights, they get completely destroyed with the excellent positioning of the Queen of Pain ultimate hitting 3. Razor down, Weaver down, and now Razor absolutely needs this BKB before Sire can even think about taking another fight like that one. Honestly, I even think Puck is probably going to need to take a BKB because Sandy's Eclipse and a well-placed scream of uh, well-placed Sonic Wave will demolish you, uh, as the old name of Outworld Devourer was. <laughs> it's that swing. That swing, if you hit Queen of Pain ult, if you hit Odile, you use Mechanism on your heroes, you talk about 1,000 point difference, or maybe even more. 
And it's extremely difficult for Sire unless they dodge all of those spells. If all those spells whiff, yeah, you're in, you're in fantastic shape. But if they all land, it's a different story. Altered State, I think they're heading to Rush. The Counter Ward, uh, they actually are indecisive, but I think they can definitely take this Roshan if they want it. If they put an Aegis on Juggernaut, I think they're in fantastic shape. Drop down that Healing Ward. Here we go. They're in the pit. I think Sire probably know that this is happening, but it's going to be very difficult. They don't have the BKB on Razor. No BKB on Razor is going to make this a tough fight. Sanity's Eclipse is up. Here comes the Puck Orb. He doesn't jump in on it. That's an interesting choice. Sien, Burger Kong, the fight is already taken. v carbs drops very quickly. Keep in mind, he still doesn't have buyback. Not a great macro pyre. Burger Kong is stunned. They're not going to be able to rely on much of anything here. An amazing Omni Slash, but it's rejected by the face shift. And three for zero, the fight for Sire. This is probably their Roshan, turning it all the way around. Bape chasing Kome back into his fountain. Can he actually get the courier? It doesn't have a speed boost. He can! I think he can get this courier. No, he can't. Kome, this is actually... Oh, he tried to Astral Prison, but it got denied. They're going to just turn this right around into Roshan. And that is all about positioning. The Juggernaut is inside here, so he can't come around to this fight. Jakiro and Naga are here. They get brought down quickly. They need this Jakiro. Just think about how much this Jakiro has done in every single fight. Keep in mind, this is a smart player. He still managed to pipe. He still managed to ice pack. He still managed to macro pyre. Problem is, it wasn't enough. You lose your supports. You have no control over the fight. Queen of Pain can't find her positioning. Juggernaut gets brought down extremely quickly. The Omni Slash was a tremendously well-timed one, but Puck rejected it with the face shift. It didn't bounce. They stopped the Omni Slash, killed the Jug. They take three. They take a tremendous fight, and this game is heating up. Razor just hit the top of the net worth charts. He has his BKB and Aegis and 1300 gold off of that fight. Uh, I would love to see the you can't from run from heaven for run from heaven Razor. I think Refresher would be fantastic coming off of this, and it would give them a lot of push because that's the thing, folks. Even with that great fight, even with the fights that they get. Sire still need a lot to get back into this, and the main thing that they need is some way of starting to get tower equity. They still have no map control. Look at the vision situation. They have next to none. They've been counter warded. They've been de warded. And the vision for altered state is pretty amazing. They, I mean, they have these two tier one towers. They know everything that's going on on their side of the map, and quite a bit of what's going on on Sire's side of the map. So Sire need vision, and they need more team fights where that one came from, and damage. It's going to have to come from somewhere, because they know that they need to rush BKB, and so we have Weaver with Lincoln's BKB, we have Puck building probably towards a BKB, although I'm not sure, and Razor has his BKB. Damage is going to become an issue as the heroes of Altered State get tankier. Whoa, okay. Alright. So, uh, Avukamo on Queen of Pain is building a Scotty. So, I think they feel that their damage is 2-1 and done. And it's going to be checkmated by the BKBs that, that Sire are building. So it's plan B already. And plan B is we want multiple auto attackers, not just Jug. Clears the creep wave quickly there, but he gives away his location. Bape is running in, but he's already used his Lincoln Sphere. This could actually be trouble for Weaver. He uses his time lapse. They've silenced Sien. Will Puck jump in off this? No. It's merely for better positioning. They don't want to get completely oppositioned here. Avukamu on the defensive. But yeah, so they want this Queen of Pain to turn into an auto attacking monster. And that's what this uh, Scotty is going to be about. And that's an interesting choice. I think it's very smart. And it's Altered State uh, kind of digging in their heels. They're like, okay, we, we're not going to blow this game out. We thought that we might. We were confident that we might. We're probably not going to blow it out. We have to settle in for a longer haul. And they get a they get a gift here. This lane is way pushed in. The lack of tier 2 towers for Sire mean that they're going to end up with situations where they want to push a tier 1, and they just can't because they have to peel back and defend. That said, it's farm for Weaver. Weaver's farm is something that we have to watch. Look at his current status. Not great. The net worth is substantially behind Queen of Pain, OD, and Juggernaut. That said, once he gets his BKB, he can then focus on damage items. This Weaver could become an extremely important factor later, but he needs damage. That's actually why I'm somewhat surprised that this Queen of Pain, that has substantially more net worth, didn't go for something like Fast Scythe. I feel that with a Fast Scythe, you can catch the Weaver out before he actually gets that BKB point, and really, really punish him very heavily. Rubik, meanwhile, oh, this is important too. Even though this is a very late mechanism, you typically say that mechanisms at 40 minutes aren't that important. Against a team that deals as much damage to you in the first 5 seconds of a team fight at, as Altered State, getting a mech is actually of tremendous importance. Because uh, basically that 250 health cancels a little bit of that rank 3. I mean, you're taking a possibly 700 damage, or basically 500 after resistances, to your players, right? Might be a little less with Nullfield. What's his rank of Null? Max rank. 
So about 500 damage after resistance from just the Queen of Pain ultimate alone. If you can deflect that by using a mechanism and have it, suddenly your team feels a lot better about surviving through the fight, especially your supports. Your supports cannot get one shot if you're Sire. Uh, it's the same thing is true for Altered State. Your supports can't get one shot or you can't win a fight. So the, the livability, the survivability of the supports is going to be a major factor. Here we go. Vendetta is up, but there is a Sentry Rune. I think it may have seen the, the Vendetta of the Nyx. And here's actually something interesting about this Agadim Scepter. This gives Queen of Pain amazing anti-push. She can clear a wave in one shot without threatening herself. Sometimes Queen of Pain will blink in and, and scream. That's a horrible idea against this team. She cannot do that for anti-push because she'll get caught out. And here it comes. Sire heading forward. Nyx Assassin in Vendetta. There's the Waning Rift. OD pops BKB. V Carbs in a bit of trouble. Excellent Ice Path. Peep wasn't caught in it though. Macropire dealing tremendous damage. Puck is in trouble, so is Nyx Assassin, frankly, but Burger Kong gets brought down. Nyx Assassin barely living through that fight. So far, it's two for zero. And Sire, I, I can't say that they're taking control, but they're certainly not seeding it. And they forced OD to use his nine second BKB charge purely in a defensive capacity. So they take tier one, and that is an important tower. Tier one mid is a critical tower to take when you're behind, because it's what map control revolves around. If you can't get the tier one mid, you can't do much of anything. Wiz, he's playing smart. He wants to play as aggressively as he possibly can while he still has this Aegis. There's only one minute left on it. Can they keep pushing? Can they get Avukamu? Bape charges in. He's going to take Avukamu off the rune. Here's the Eye of the Storm. While they have this Aghanim's running, they want to take this tier 2 if they can. And just look at how much that Aghanim Scepter Razor Ultimate deals. That is their push. That's what it's based off of. And it looks like Razor may go a Heart of Taras. And suddenly... All the damage in the world that they can throw out in one shot will not be enough to bring down this Razor. And that's a substantial factor. He's going to lose this Aegis in just about uh, 15 seconds. But he's feeling good about his survivability outside of the Aegis now. That said, let's not count Altered State out. They've got three heroes with a tremendous amount of farm. The OD has 14k net worth. He has 4k saved up. Will we see? Uh, it's going to be Scythe of Vice. I think he has to build the Scythe. His intelligence right now is nothing special. He needs more. And Scythe is going to give you a lot of bang for the buck in terms of getting your int up. He only has 100 int. I mean, he is still a, he's a, enough to... Uh, he's not enough to, to damage Puck. He only mana drains him. He is enough. He's not enough to damage Rubik. So he really, really needs that Scythe of Vice. Here it comes. They haven't seen Coltrane. He spots them out. They're... They're... Oh man, they do catch out Peep. There's the Ensnare. There's the Omni Slash. This Rubik will fall. Burger Kong, meanwhile, Coltrane. I don't think this was such a good idea. He really needs to get out of here. Vendetta, but they've caught him out. Avukamu with the Shadow Strike. They've planted down three Sentry Wards and still haven't killed the Nyx Assassin. But an excellent, excellent, excellent ultimate from Queen of Pain. They've brought down the supports, and it's key. Without their supports, Sire don't feel confident taking a team fight. And that's critical for Altered State. That was just better positioning, and even after spotting the smoke gank, unfortunately, Rubik just maybe a bit of a miscommunication. Sire, maybe the Rubik thought that they could jump in. But that's been a problem. The nine deaths of Peep has been a thorn in the side of Sire, not being able to guarantee that that Rubik lives through fights. That's their mechanism, and he doesn't have buyback. This could be a tier three. It looks like there is their healing ward down. I don't see it. Uh, yeah, they don't have a healing ward. There's the pipe. They want to high ground. Bape is there. He's taking a little bit of damage. Here goes the tower. I don't think that they can defend this. There's the ice path. This Weaver's in a bit of trouble. He doesn't want to use his time lapse, not just yet. But this is trouble. They don't have fortification for this tower. They're there's the Queen of Pain ultimate. It does whiff, but the tier three, the Rax, it could go down here. Koma is sieging it. Sien, they've got, they've lost the tower. They're waning rifted. They're dream called as well. Beep, he's got to get out of here. No, the Weaver will drop down. Wiz in the backcourt, but have they lost the position that they've been relying upon so dearly? Razor fighting OD. The unstable current actually locks OD in place for a second. He takes the Fade Bolt. He's taking a lot of damage. There's that Aghanim Scepter. Will Koma get out alive? No. They trade two for one in the end. Well, really two for three, but they most important thing is altered state has breached the high ground that desolator paying off the healing ward the pick of the juggernaut paying off as decent as that defense was from sire they needed the rubik there they needed the nyx assassin there and without the two of them they lose a lot they didn't even use the black king bar from the weaver in that fight the weaver really just dropped much faster than he needed to and the reason for that is no supports or the supports joined the fight late because they got caught out so altered state uh credit where credit's due 
excellent timing. The instant that they killed those two supports, they said, this is the push at which we have to high ground. We can feel ourselves losing some control of this game. We're still ahead on gold. I mean, we're still tremendously ahead farm-wise, but all the farm in the world won't matter if we don't convert that into a lasting advantage by taking lanes. And they secure themselves. Uh, it's not just any lane. It's the lane in which they still have the tier 1 up. So the odds of Sire being able to get their own super creeps in this lane, thus evening out the lane, is zero, essentially. Uh, Sire, if they take a lane, it's going to be something like mid or maybe bot. So this top lane is going to be problematic for them, basically from now until the end of the game. Scythe and Heart, two important pickups for each of their respective teams. Like I said, Heart will allow Wiz to just fight as long as he wants. The only issue is, if Wiz outlasts his entire team... He's still gonna have trouble. Like he can't one v five. He simply can't. Razor is not a hero who can one v five the opposing team. So his team, I'm, it's not that they'll let him down, but I just feel like they'll die so much earlier than the Razor that the heart might not be as effective as you might expect. Twenty five seconds for Roshan. They check it with the bugs, but both teams converging on it. I think this rush could decide the game. You still see Altered State feeling like they're way ahead, feeling that they can take a rush on. And they do have three farmed heroes. Scotty, Agonims, Boots of Travel on Queen of Pain. Scythe, Black King Bar, Mechanism up on OD. And of course the Juggernaut, who's been on top of the net worth graph basically all game. Building very, very close to a butterfly that could be extremely sufficient. Roshan is up. Will Sire seek to take the fight? That's the question. Do you just give up this Rush? It's not a cheese Rush, so it's not the most consequential thing. But even just an Aegis one way or the other could tip this game's balance so effectively. The scales, I mean, they could tip. Let's take a look at the buyback status. Only two buybacks. So this fight's a big deal. Queen of Pain, this buyback is huge. She has the Boots of Travel. So Queen of Pain can buy back and Boots of Travel in and essentially have two bites at the apple for this next fight. Juggernaut, no such luck. He can't buy back and buy Boots of Travel, so he won't be doing that. We could see him buy back and just try to come in, though. So it's a delicate fight. When you don't have buyback, you really don't feel comfortable taking a high-stakes fight like this. Because, again, the entire fight could be determined by it. But here's the problem for Sire. They need to send somebody back. They need to deal with it. And an immediate ping comes out. Now that Bape isn't in the pit, they know that they can take this rush. Here comes Kome. He's immediately in. Will Sire actually try to take it 4v5? Can they? Bape! He's gonna Shukuchi over? They're gonna... They're going to forfeit their ranged racks to try to take Roche? I don't know about this. There goes the orb. Now, Altered State really feel comfortable. They have this in here. Daddy Fastax, he blinks in. There's the Dream Quill. Sien up on the high ground. Has he been taking out of this fight? Wiz has already BKB'd. Beat. Vape is here as well. Avu Kamu actually boots or travels out. The Omni Slash enough to kill the Rubik already. Knock on the ground. Huge, huge Sanity's Eclipse. Coltrane in trouble. He will drop as well. Two for two so far. Kome, he goes down. Only Sien left up. He's taking a tremendous amount of damage. The Razor ultimate. It. It's enough! It's four down for two! They lose their range tracks. Avu Kamu is trying to split push them into death, but I don't know about this decision either. That was four for two, and all they get is a ranged Rax. I'm not sure about it. Wiz has come up. They really, really know that they can't afford to lose these tier fours. But all of Altered State go down. Maybe it's a Roshan as well. Bape, meanwhile, just trying to chase Avu Kamu, but no way that you can do this. He actually picks up his Necro. So this is actually really, really smart. This has been non-traditional item choices all around, and this is a bit schizophrenic, but I have to say I like this Necro the most out of anything. He has Boots of Travel, so once this is Necro 3, we talked about the fact that this lane is always going to get pushed in. Avu Kamu can backdoor them with the Necro 3s. The only question is, Sire just won a big team fight, and you know, what? it's like you we just want a big team fight. What do you do now? Well, I think they need to mop up Rush. They need this Aegis. He's quite low, but there's only a few seconds. Ugh, they, they knew that they had to counter push that. That's the problem. You take a big fight like that, and you just can't win off of it. You can't take a lane. You can't take Rax. You can't even take Roshan. And that's... It's so tough for Sire. Here they go. They've got two. I think they're going to try to sneak Rosh. Uh, is Was there vision of it? I think... Uh, what's the vision key again? I'm not pressing the right buttons. Okay, whatever. They can probably get this rush if they're quick enough. I don't think Altered State have the wherewithal. Yeah, they don't. It goes down too fast. Aegis probably on Weaver if I had to guess. Wiz is too too heavy. He's too tanky. They can't actually put it on him. Bape takes the Aegis. That's a little bit of extra gold. They badly needed that. He's got the Demon Edge. I have to assume this is going to be an MKB. They know that this Juggernaut is going for Battle Fury. In fact, they know that he's finished Battle Fury. And so MKB is absolutely critical for Weaver to be able to do something against this. 
And so the fight continues apace. Let's take a look at these kills deaths. Razor has not died in ages. Wiz has really, in some respects, taken his team on his tanky back. 3k HP. He's got this uh, unstable current countermeasure that makes it so annoying to initiate on him. Something like Entangle and Snare... Uh, or something like uh, even using Scythe of Vice on this Razor if he doesn't have BKB up is going to cause you to just take that jolt. It's a decent amount of damage and it's a big slow. Like eh, it's only a little bit. Like the fact that it slows you down for so for that 1.6 seconds can really fuck with your positioning a little bit. And Puck, even with his incredibly slow start, even with the fact that he's uh, five levels behind the Queen of Pain. He's starting to get some things done. He's very close to that Scythe of Vice. And keep in mind, this is a Queen of Pain that does not have BKB. He's gone Scotty, uh, Aghanim Scepter, and Necro 3 in a second. So his pushing power, unparalleled. This is the most effective pushing Queen of Pain that you will probably ever see in your lives. What it isn't is a Queen of Pain that can survive teamfights. And so I think Sire will seek to do, do stuff like that in teamfights. And we may actually see Altered State shifting into basically a split push composition. Understand that you will probably not dominate the teamfights, but try to parlay this one lane in the top into tier 4s every time you do so. And, you know, uh, taking a leaf out of uh, Alliance, the World Champions book, is certainly not a, not a bad book to take a leaf out of. None, I mean, but I can't draw any conclusions about this game at this point. Oh, we, uh, I think we have some stats about Razor coming up in a second, but we just had a little bit of a bug. I think this is just, uh, for now, it's just a general picture. Razor is a pretty good hero, and this is a pretty good Razor game. This is one of the, this net worth on Razor is one of the highest net worth Razors I've seen in a while. But again, Razor, he's not going to win this game 1v5. Not until Refresher, and maybe not even then. That said, if he gets that Refresher, and Sire 5 wipe... Altered State, that could actually be game. If you've never seen how fast a Refresher Razor pushes, it's fast enough to win the game off a big one team fight. They do have, uh, there's still three tower, outer towers up for Altered State, but this critical middle lane is not. They can push in and try to take this if they win a team fight, but they have to find the team fight first, and that's going to be difficult. You can just see that Sire, they're grouping as five, they know they can't get caught out. Yeah. I mean, Razor just seek, just seizing this first net worth spot, and if they can find something like a smoke, if they can catch Komet out, I think it could be a big deal for them. But for Altered State, the most important thing is buybacks. They did buy out for Juggernaut, so he doesn't have buyback yet, although he's uh, pretty close. And Queen of Pain doesn't have buyback because he's been focusing on building up these Necro 3s, and OD does have buyback. So I think they're going to save up as much buyback as they can, and they know that they will probably at this point in an even team fight, not be able to secure a victory. But what they do have is much, 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 much better map control and ability to farm. So even though it feels like Sire getting more stable, you still see the general tint of this gold grab, the general slope heading upwards. And that's because the map control that Ultra State can bring to bear gives them more space to farm and just a continuing ability to get more equity out of the map. Just look at how far T Queen of Pain can push this in, giving them complete access to this jungle. And look how far the top pushes in by itself, giving Altered State quite a bit of access to these western camps of this jungle Double if they want damage. them. So as a consequence, I still feel the onus is more or less on Sire. Ah, he's not going Refresher. That's a shame. It looks like he's going a Butterfly. Maybe a Halberd. Halberd could be pretty good in this game. We'll have to see whether he builds Halberd or Butterfly here, but I would honestly love to see the Refresher sooner or later. I, I really think that it's not just a pub star, it's actually quite an effective build. Weaver, meanwhile, uh, unquestionably MKB, I feel. He's going to make this MKB to try to counteract the Juggernaut uh, Butterfly. Altered State have had a hell of a time actually keeping the Juggernaut alive, so I would suspect that the uh, Weaver is going to be able to be very effective against that once that MKB comes up. He doesn't need buyback just yet, because he does have Aegis. Eventually, this Weaver is going to want to save buyback as well. And honestly, this Aegis, unfortunately... Like I said, Sire are under enough pressure that it's very hard for them to take advantage of that Aegis. It's very hard for them to not just let it ride for the one minute. The nice thing is it gives them a reprieve. While the Aegis is up, there's no way that Ultra State feel confident enough. Because your Weaver can die, not use BKB, then use BKB, then use his time lapse, and essentially you have four Weavers to contend with. Until that BKB comes, that Aegis comes down, it's not a good position. It's going to be reclaimed in exactly one minute, and Altered State, they're smoked up. If they win this fight, if Sire win this fight, they can't win the game. If Altered State win this fight, they could win the game. And so this is going to be an interesting engagement if they find it. Avukamo spotted out. He's the vanguard of his team here. Peep, has he been caught out again for the last time? There's the telekinesis. Avukamu, he's in so much trouble. There's the impale. X 
Axel and Ice Path Omni Slash coming through the Macro Pyre, the Sanity's Eclipse, but the Song of the Siren ruins it! Abu Kamo already down, Bape just fighting, he actually uses time left before his Aegis, one for one so far, Sien in trouble, Burger Kong, they're just disengaging as fast as they can now, will Sien get out? No! They lose two big heroes, and that's an important fight for Sire, they needed to keep that up, Bape I don't think he needed to use the timeless. He probably could have popped his Aegis, but he actually keeps his Aegis through the fight. Not that it matters. It'll despawn in a matter of seconds. But that's another fight that they weren't able to take. Abu Kamu getting a little bit greedy, jumping in on the supports. No BKB on this Queen of Pain that they really, really, really need. Oh my god, where the hell did that happen? Bape chases down and kills Naga Sire, and it's only a support. But it's a support with some, with some oomph. It's a support with Force Staff. I don't know what this Ring of Region is about. Uh, maybe eventually they want to make a mech on the Naga? Because she has four staff. Yeah, I think they want to make a mech on the Naga and ditch the mech on the OD eventually. Keep an eye on this Oblivion staff, though. I don't think this is Orchid. I think this is the OD refresher. Let's, let's think about refreshers in this game, folks, because they could be a huge deal. A refresher OD could just pop these supports. In that game, uh, in that last fight, the Song of the Siren just... I think it deflected a lot of the damage that they were seeking to do, especially from the Macro Pyre and possibly from the... From the Sanity's Eclipse. But there it is! The kills are even! For the first time in the game, 30 to 30 at 57 minutes, just about 1 W, 1 kill per minute. And this game is very, very hot, folks. It's could not be more uh, back and forth for both teams. And I can't remember the last team fight in which Sire really convincingly lost. I guess it was the one that secured the top for, for Altered State, where they got the two supports early. But here's a little bit of push coming out from Sire. Weaver destroys the tower, and finally at least a tier 1. Finally, it's a little bit of map control. And Another uh, deceptively big deal is the fact that even with the Sentry, I'll just say we're not able to counter ward this. So we talked about how important vision is for Sire. Defensive vision of their jungle is a huge deal to make sure they don't get ganked out on it and they feel comfortable farming it. It's almost go time for Wiz to decide what he wants to make for his next item. The options are basically Halberd and Butterfly. Butterfly could be a huge deal for his auto attack, but Halberd could be a huge deal for just neutering the damage output of Sien. I think at this point, since he's saved so much, it probably is that Battle Fury, and that's going to be one scary Razor, folks. That's going to be a Razor who uh, really does not care at all about any of your damage. The next Roshan, by the way, two and a half minutes, actually about two minutes, 15 seconds. Keep... Oh, actually, it's two minutes exactly. Roshan will be a big deal as well. Sire, I think they're feeling confident about their ability to take team fights. If they can take the Cheese Roche, Cheese on Weaver, Aegis on on Razor, or the other way around, actually. Actually, no, Cheese, cheese on Razor because Weaver can get, get caught out and killed. Either team will love, 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 love to have that Roche. If Altered State can secure it, they put the Aegis on Queen of Pain. That's critical for them. Naga Siren. Ah, it's Vlad's. That's really cool. I was wondering what she was making with this Ring of Regen. It's going to be Vladimir's offering, and that's very, very smart, because it'll give them armor against Razor and Weaver, who are starting to get very, very scary. It'll give the Juggernaut a little bit of lifesteal uh, and damage. I mean, damage for everybody. Auto attack. Honestly, giving the damage auto attack for Queen of Pain is not... Uh, it's not that bad, not that bad, because he has quite a bit of uh, auto attack potential with the Scotty. But nonetheless, they found themselves stymied. Oh man, Orc uh, Refresher done for OD. So keep an eye on that as well. If it doesn't get screwed over by Song by Song of the Siren, that could be exactly what Altered State need to take a team fight. Again, whichever team loses its supports first is the team that's going to lose a fight, no question. And so if that can happen, here comes Sire, here comes Bape, they're on the OD, will he BKB? He's being chased, Saga the Siren, Daddy Fatsax, he blinked into this, he's gotta sight the vice, what an ice path, the BKB for Weaver, excellent, excellent job, but Bape, he's in a lot of trouble, nice time lapse, Daddy Fatsax is fighting this, but there comes the OD ult, Coltrane, he's down, Koma is taking over this fight, Bape is gone, that OD ultimate with the refresher OD ultimate, did that just secure them the entire game they bring down all five buybacks from weaver buybacks from razor but that was the item that turned it i said to watch the refreshers folks and that refresher was important they killed sire so quickly that sire were completely unable to respond they don't do they have buyback they don't have buyback on puck they don't have buyback on nyx bape this is their last ditch effort there's the ice path what an excellent placement nice telekinesis from peep he stole the od ultimate but he didn't have enough he didn't have enough intellect to actually deal damage to them. Abu Kamo, he's up on the high ground. They're peeling back a little bit. They don't think that they can high ground. They're not quite confident enough. There's the ultimate. Hits Bape. 
Uh, the tier 3 still alive. Bape runs in. There's the mechanism. They want to go in for another one. Wiz peeled off. Bape! He scythevised Ice Path! That's the Weaver. Is that game Wiz? He's thrown out his ultimate. He's still very healthy. But the tier 3 is down. The Rax is down. The second lane for Altered State. Do they want more Kome jumping in? There's the Astral Imprisonment. Ice Path will probably not hit. But Wiz, he BKBs. He's entangled in response. There's the Omni Slash. Razor, he's so close. He's still alive. The pipe saving him for a little bit. Excellent spike carapace and an impale from Coltrane. They're hanging on by the absolute narrowest margin. Wiz makes it to the fountain, but it's two lanes. Will they seek a third? They could. They're in the fountain. Altered state. They want to end this. There is the Queen of Pain ultimate. Nice spike carapace again, but Abu Kamu. He wants to chase them all the way into the fountain. Coltrane. He's all the way in the back. There's the ice path again. Abu Kamu lifted up. There's a very, very nice impale. One more oh, mana burn. They can't quite do it. They can't catch him. Queen of Pain is out. And meanwhile, OD, the rest of the team. Queen of Pain baits and the rest of the team cleans up. Here comes Mega Creeps. Here comes the GG. A 61 minute game. Winner's bracket round two of the Chicago Steel Series open two. Sire gets taken out after a bad lane phase. They stabilize. They were able to do extremely well for themselves in the mid game. But Kome on the OD finds enough room. They farm up. They get the refresher. And in a huge fight, he drops that hammer and hammers Sire into submission. Altered state. They advance into round three of the winner's bracket. Sire sent down into the losers. But not without their dignity, folks, as that was an absolute barn burner of a game. I'm Vikramond. My voice is doing okay, although I really need a drink of water. And thank you so much for watching. Sponsors are Ignite, Steel Series, uh, Dust Off, and Merlini Dota. Be going up to the next game after I get a drink. Thanks for watching.